What's up guys, Xbox Mob 360 here, and in today's video I have a review of one of my favorite lasers in my personal collection, and that's my Wicked Laser Spider 3 Krypton. So this is the 532nm 500 milliwatt model, and I really wish I had something more powerful, but unfortunately this is the most powerful green laser pointer I have at the moment. So I'll explain those specifications for anybody who doesn't know a whole lot about lasers. 532nm, that's the measurement of the wavelength, the color of the laser, it's a green laser. And the 500 milliwatts is the power or strength of the laser. So before I even get into this video, I do have to say that I'm not the original owner and that's why I'm not doing an unboxing of a new product right here. Anybody who knows a whole lot about lasers knows that the laws for high powered lasers like this one have really been increasing and it's a lot harder to ship them internationally. Wicked Lasers has stopped shipping to the US for a while now. So essentially the only way you can get your hands on a Wicked Lasers laser pointer is to buy one from somebody who already has one in the United States and purchased it before the ban. So that's why I have this older model. It's a 2009 model and that's why it's a bit of a lower power too. It's 500 milliwatts as opposed to the newer ones out there that are like 1.5 watts. But I still really like this laser a lot and it is capable of burning some things and I'll show you guys that later on in the video. So with this laser pointer, I have the laser pointer itself. I have the holster which has a little belt buckle thing to attach to your belt. I have a charger, a battery, and an expanded lens kit. So starting with the laser, one thing you'll notice immediately is that unlike the newer models, this one does not have a button on the side, it just has the one button on the bottom, and it also doesn't actually say Krypton anywhere on it. I mean, it may say it somewhere on the label, but as far as the white words go, it just says Wicked Lasers and Spider 3. The newer models will also say Krypton on the side of it. The holster is of good quality. It's a Wicked Lasers brand holster. It's not some generic brand. It has the little thing, like I mentioned, that you can attach it to your belt buckle, and the laser fits in there pretty well. And I'll show you guys that right now. It also has the little Velcro top to keep it closed. I actually use this laser holster with my Arctic Laser too, my Wicked Lasers Arctic Laser, and that one also fits in there pretty well, so it might just be a one-size-fits-all kind of deal. I don't think it's specifically made for the Krypton. But I'm going to move on to the lens kit now. This is the six-piece extended lens kit from Wicked Lasers. And the interesting part about this is that I actually ordered it separately directly from their website. While they have stopped shipping their lasers to the U.S., you can still buy the accessories and have them shipped here. So this lens kit sent me back about $50 plus shipping, but it has a really important lens in there. It's the focusing lens, and that allows you to burn a lot better. So moving on to the battery and the charger, the battery it takes is just your standard 18650 3.7 volt lithium battery, just like a lot of other laser pointers. And this is the charger right here. It has a little indicator light on the very top of it. Because I'm not the first owner, I am the second owner, and I got both of these items from another person. I'm not sure if they're both Wicked Lasers original products, but they both do the job for me. So now that I've covered all the accessories, I'm going to move on to the actual laser now and give you guys a much better look at that and all of its features. So, like I said, it was manufactured in 2009, it's a bit of an older model, it's 500 milliwatts of strength and the wavelength is 532nm. And I want to show you guys something that I made right here in the very top, it goes inside of the lens, it's kind of like a little lens corrector. The original owner of this liked to use the laser without the safety cap on I guess, and he had gotten a little dust in there or a scratch on the lens inside of the laser. And what it did was it caused a little light to be spread in the form of a line so you could see like a line passing through the dot and I'll show you guys that in a second. I just made this little corrector, it's made out of cardboard lined with a thin layer of metal inside so that the cardboard doesn't burn ever. And what it does is it basically just eliminates that line. My dot is still very strong, it doesn't seem to affect my beam strength at all. But that little line passing through my dot really did bug me. So I made this corrector, it kind of blocks out that little light that's escaping and I think it works pretty good. It doesn't eliminate it fully, but I'm still working on it, and I'm going to do a separate video to really show you how I made that and how it works. But moving on from that, right here is the battery indicator. It has three little lights that light up red, and when all three are lit up, that means it's fully charged. You have the safety pin down here, and I find it kind of hard to pull out, but without that safety pin in there, the laser won't operate, so that's kind of like a little safety feature, I guess. And then you have your little rubber button on the bottom to turn on the laser. This is the only button on this laser pointer. The newer ones also have a button on the side. To unscrew the laser and access where you would put in the battery, you just unscrew this whole bottom part that has the button on it. And the laser pointer itself operates on one of those 18650 batteries that I mentioned earlier. It goes in with the negative side down, positive side up. So that's pretty simple and straightforward. As far as the battery life goes, I'm not entirely sure. I really wish I had a manual or something like that so I can tell you guys. I'd say a couple of hours, no more than maybe three hours of use. 
but I'm going to zoom in on that label right now and I'm probably going to give you guys a still image too that way you guys can read all of the information on it. One little piece of information about this laser that I have not yet mentioned is that it's classified as a class 3B laser pointer and I don't really know a whole lot about those classes so I'm not really going to go into that but that may be some helpful information for somebody who knows a bit more about those classes. So I'm going to actually power on the laser and just show you guys it really quick. The lighting level and this wood surface right here really don't do it justice at all. While you may not be able to tell in this lighting from the camera, I can completely see the beam and I'll show you guys in other shots in a couple minutes. I can completely see the beam from standing directly behind it holding it sideways. It is completely visible in a normal lighted indoor setting. And that's one of the best things about these green laser pointers is that while other lasers may come in higher power outputs like the blue laser pointers that go up to like tons of wattage, the green laser pointers are the most visible of all the laser pointers and that's just because that green coloring is the most visible to the human eye. So obviously it goes without saying that while using this product you should be using the laser safety glasses and that you should not aim it at any person, living thing, plane, neighbor's yard, anything that would get you in trouble. One other interesting thing to note is that this laser only has one setting whereas the newer spider models have multiple settings. They have low power, high power strobe, stuff like that. This laser pointer just has one high power setting. And as you guys just saw, those three lights, or two of them at least, were on. Those are the battery indicator lights. They light up red while the laser is in use. So one last thing that I wanted to show you guys, if you didn't already know, is that the lens caps on screw right here from the very top of the laser. Right now, I'm just using the safety lens, and I have my little corrector piece in there. I'll show you that right now. Like I said, I'm going to do a separate video on that, how I built it, what it does, and how it's used. Um, when I get that video uploaded, I'll put a link to it in the video description, but I won't have the link until it's uploaded, so just stay tuned for that. So on the very top of the laser, you guys can see that little hole that the light actually passes through. Inside of that hole, there's another little tiny glass lens, the first lens that the laser passes through. And what I suspect is that the original owner who didn't use the safety lens all the time, I think he might have either gotten a little particle of dust in there or maybe even scratched it somehow. But I haven't really seen it affect the beam strength or the burning power or anything like that at all so I'm kind of just leaving it alone to avoid further damaging it and that corrector really seems to fix the problem altogether. So one last thing before I show you that laser in different lighting levels and do the burn test I just wanted to give you guys a little size comparison to show you guys how big this laser actually is. It's a lot bigger than people actually realize when watching videos. This is the comparison to a $20 bill. To be completely honest I really don't even mind the size. It's kind of the exact size you'd imagine a real life lightsaber to be and it kind of has that feel too it's very heavy it's a full metal build in case you didn't already realize that so moving on to testing out this laser in different lighting levels this first lighting level is a normal well lit indoor setting and the beam is completely visible the dot is very visible as well and that laser beam is actually even more visible than you guys can see on the camera even when held sideways you can completely see the laser beam in the air so moving on to an outdoor setting in daylight, you can completely see the laser dot, but unfortunately that beam disappears. I'm going to try to give you guys the best shot of it. It can be kind of tough to spot from a distance just because that laser is so small, but once you spot it, you'll notice that you can see it from several hundred feet away and that green dot is still very, very bright. So that brings us to the last setting I have to show you guys, and that's a dark nighttime setting. And this is where this laser really turns into a lightsaber because that beam is just crazy powerful at night. It'll It'll definitely get the cops called on you if you aren't careful about it. Don't shine it in anybody else's yards or anything like that, not at vehicles. Generally, a good rule of hand is that if you think it could even remotely get you in trouble, just don't do it. But as long as you guys are safe and smart with these lasers, you won't get yourself into any trouble at all. And you guys may actually be able to hear a siren in the background, but trust me, that's not for me. I just got out here. So one other setting I did want to show you guys, but I didn't really get a chance to do was a foggy day or a foggy night. That's the only setting that really beats the night setting because a foggy day or a foggy night, it just amplifies that laser beam by like 10 times. It makes it look like a solid object. And one thing that I really do think is worth mentioning is that at no point in this video did I enhance my laser beam with any steam or fog or anything like that. I know some YouTubers do this and I'm not completely opposed to this at all. I just really want to give you guys the most accurate representation of this laser. So before the burn test, I just quickly wanted to show you guys what three of those expanded lens kit lenses look like. This first one is the dot lens. It's much similar to the star lens that come with a lot of cheap laser pointers, except this one doesn't spin. 
And this is actually my favorite lens to use at night. I just really love how you can see that one laser beam split up into like a hundred different laser beams in midair. So this next lens I'm showing you guys, I don't really know the name of it. I usually just call it the minus lens because it looks like a subtraction sign. So at first you guys may think this looks like me holding my laser sideways, but it's actually me aiming my laser frontwards and it creates this giant line, kind of like a giant scanner. And you guys do need to be really careful when you're using these lens kits. It makes the area that you're shining your laser at much larger and you may accidentally end up shining it into a road without realizing it. So this next one I'm showing you guys I call the plus lens just because it looks like an addition sign and it's basically just the one I just showed you, the minus one, except it has two intercrossing lines. Nothing special but you can see the lines formed in the air, the beam spreading so I find that pretty cool. So now that I've shown you guys all of that, I will move on to that burn test that I promised you guys. And to start, I want to show you guys what lens I'm using. This is the focusing lens that comes with that expanded lens kit. And I'm using this because while the laser can normally burn, it does burn much better with a focusing lens. For whatever reason, the Spider series of lasers does not have a focus feature unless you have that focus lens. So I definitely do think that they could step it up in that department because a focus feature has become pretty standard on a lot of lasers now. So this is my burning setup right here. I have a sheet of metal down. I have my laser propped up and I have that focusing lens on there and the focal point the point where that beam is most focused in is about one to two inches away from my laser so we're just gonna start with a normal red top match and we get it to light within a second or two so now we're gonna move on to five red top matches in a row and we're gonna see how fast we can light these all and I kind of just have them propped up in a piece of tin foil so that they'll all stand up and they all light very very fast I'm not speeding up any of this so if you do decide to do this test just be careful if you're indoors that you don't burn anything or burn your house down or anything like that. Next up is electrical tape. We're going to see how long it takes us to cut all the way through. And immediately on contact you can see a bunch of smoke coming off this black electrical tape. Try your best to not inhale any of this smoke. It's uh, widely believed that the smoke that comes off of this electrical tape is a carcinogen, meaning it can cause cancer, so try not to inhale too much of it. Obviously, breathing in small amounts won't kill you, but that only took us about 15 to 20 seconds, so not bad on that. So next up is the black plastic part of a CD case. A lot of you will probably have a CD case that's black, but mine was clear and had a little black plastic piece in the middle, so I'm burning that part. And the same thing goes with really any plastic material that you're burning. Try your best to breathe in as little as possible. Small amounts here or there aren't going to kill you, but long term it could become an issue, so just avoid that. And if you guys look closely, you can see that the beam is piercing the plastic and burning all the way through. So when you're doing these burning tests, just make sure that both objects are steady, that the laser is steady and the item that you're holding is steady as well. And next up is one that I like to do a lot. It's a very dry leaf, like a bone dry dead leaf that I got outside. And immediately a bunch of smoke comes off of this thing. And if I hold it on there long enough in one spot, I usually get the result of red embers forming and if long enough it lighting on fire. So I am going to stop once I see the red embers and remember to wear your safety glasses while you're doing this. I think that's just about all that I have to burn. You can do other things as well like wood, balloons, stuff like that, but this is just everything that I had on hand. So now that I've wrapped up all of that, I'm going to move on to the reviewing aspect of this laser and I'm going to try to keep it short because I've already talked about most of the stuff, but... Overall, this is one of the higher end lasers. A lot of laser pointers out there in the market are cheap and they aren't they aren't crappy, but they're just they're not the high quality that this item is. It is a high quality product and I really wish I had an LPM, which is a meter that allows you to measure the laser strength so I can tell you how accurate that reading is. But unfortunately, I do not, so I'm just going to have to assume that they're being truthful when they tell you that the maximum output is 500 milliwatts. So I just really like the quality of this laser. It's definitely the highest quality laser that I have in my laser pointer collection, and I, I just like Wicked Lasers as a company just because, I don't know, they're, they stand behind their lasers. There's so many Chinese laser pointers out there that are cheap and cheesy and don't even have a brand because it's not a company that's willing to stand behind the laser. This is definitely the highest quality green laser pointer I've ever owned. However, I do have my cons and the biggest one is the fact that you can't obtain these in the US anymore. I know there are shipping bans that stop you from shipping these internationally and whatnot, but it would be nice if Wicked Lasers, I don't know, maybe opened up a facility here in the US and started manufacturing them there. I, I don't know what the laws are, but if that is within their possibility, I really want them to do it. I really feel that there's a growing number of people here in the US that are becoming more interested with these lasers and the technology as it's developing and Wicked Lasers is really limiting themselves with not selling to this big market. 
However, I can't be too critical on that because I don't know the exact laws. There may be laws in the US that prevent you from manufacturing high powered lasers like that in this country. So. I can't be too critical on that point. One thing I do have a big issue with is the fact that this laser does not come with a standard focusing ability. You have to purchase an extra lens kit. So that's definitely an area where they could improve, but one big issue I have with this laser is the price. It's If you go on their website right now, wickedlasers.com, I'll put the link below, the price of the current model of the Krypton laser is close to $1,000, if not over. And rest assured, guys, I did not pay anywhere near that price. I paid a fraction of it because I'm an eBay shark and I just snagged a good deal on there, and it is an older model as well, but... It's just the alternatives, the cheap Chinese laser pointers, which are about maybe one-fourth, one-third of the strength of this one and are still very visible in daylight and in nighttime settings, those are $20, $10. I mean, the difference in price is just outrageous. Now, I know these high-powered green laser diodes are somewhat difficult to make and much harder to make than the average laser diode from what I've heard, but it's just not competitive pricing whatsoever. I'd, I'd have to rate this product at a 7.5 out of 10, and that's just because the pricing is just not competitive. I mean, the difference between their price and the cheap Chinese alternative that is significantly less powerful but at the same time is is still a good quality. The cheap Chinese lasers, they're still visible in day and night and they still have some of the effects and some of the burning ability that this one does. It's just the price difference of nearly a thousand dollars is just too big. They gotta close that gap a bit more. So that's gonna wrap up my review on the Krypton Laser by Wicked Lasers. So if you guys found this video helpful in any way, hit that like button below. And if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button for more amazing laser videos just like this. And as always guys, thank you for watching from Xbox Mod 360.